Sometimes the most intimidating part of starting therapy is starting. And by that, I mean that first intake session. It can be hard to know what to expect, and you don't know your therapist yet, so you can't really be super comfortable with the process. So I'd like to give you a little sneak peek behind the scenes of what goes on in your intake session so you know what to expect. The first thing that'll happen is your therapist will likely introduce themselves and then invite you to sit down. They'll first go over policies, and usually these are administrative things like their cancellation or weather policies. After they kind of cover that more boring administrative stuff, the first question is usually one of the most important ones we have to ask, which is, why therapy? Why are we here today? If you don't really know the answer to that question, that's okay. Part of our job is helping you figure that out. But if you do have an idea of what you're hoping to get out of therapy, cluing us in early can really help us get a jump start on your progress. After we kind of covered the basis of why we're there, we're going to ask you a lot of questions about yourself. And I mean a lot. We're going to ask about your family, your friends, your job, your goals, your dreams, your pets. Probably a lot of questions about your pets. We're going to ask what your favorite things to do are and how you cope with disappointment or what the best memory you have is. We're going to try to get to know you the best we can in a short period of time. And sometimes that can feel a little uncomfortable. So I always say that you can ask me anything if you want to know about me too. So it doesn't feel like quite a one-way street. But ultimately what we're trying to do is build that therapeutic relationship that's going to be the basis of treatment moving forward. It may not feel like there's a lot therapeutically happening in that first session because the questions don't seem very therapy-like, but a lot is happening and it can be a very important session. So as long as you're honest and you're as comfortable as you want to be, which means you don't have to answer any questions we ask, you'll be just fine and the sessions from there on will be a lot less intimidating. What if your teen doesn't want to go to therapy? Let's face it, how many teens actually volunteer and want to be in therapy? Not very many. There are a few, but not very many. As a parent coach at Mindful Healing, I can tell you there are ways to get your teen to go without making them feel ashamed. Because often the resistance in going to therapy is that they don't want to acknowledge the problem. Or they're afraid that if they talk about the problem, they're going to be feel more pain and they're going to feel overwhelmed. So you can tell them that they don't have to talk a whole lot about the problem, that the therapist may actually give them some skills so that instead of feeling more pain, they'll feel less. And then maybe they really don't have a problem, but you're a little worried and it would make you feel better if they spent an hour a week, just an hour of their time going so that you could feel better. And then if it doesn't seem to benefit them. They don't have to stay, but at least give it a shot and try talking to the therapist and seeing whether whether or not it would help. After all, sometimes somebody who's not in the family can hear things in a way that a parent can't hear, and they get to start with a clean slate when they talk to the therapist and share in a way that is safe because only the therapist will know what they're feeling. So there are many ways to try and get them to go. The bottom line is they need to give it at least one or two weeks of time before they argue that they don't want to be there. You never know what could happen.